Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Please uh, join me while Mr. Kidd leads us in our invocation and Mr. Sanders in our Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, if you would like to, I, I would ask that you join me in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the blessings and the, and the freedoms that we have in this country. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we just specifically lift up and ask that you be with those uh, <clears throat> families and the schools and the students in the east that are uh, that are recovering from the from the floods and from the hurricane the lord just uh, just be with them you got uh just be with our students be with our educators be with our workers lord tonight we just uh we just give thanks for those that are making a difference in our students lives every single day in very small ways but very impactful in important ways they may not go recognize lord but we just thank you for them and we ask you to just be with them and encourage them throughout this year to just continue making a difference in our students lives and we we pray for the safety of our students we specifically lift up the cisd police force and we just ask for protection we ask for guidance we ask for for wisdom to, to be with them and to continue to uh, to keep our schools safe. Dear Lord, just be with us tonight. Um, thank you for everyone in this room and their hearts uh, for service, their hearts for our students, Lord. We, we pray that you give us guidance and direction as a board tonight and, and lead us uh, in a way that would glorify you. In your holy name we pray, amen. 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 Please join me in honoring the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now please join me in honoring our state flag. Honor the Texas, Texas flag. flag. I our pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Kidd and Mr. Sanders. Um, item 2A, Special District Recognition Read for a Better Life Initiative. Dr. Knoll. Well, thank you, President Bush. I'm going to actually <clears throat> move around a little bit this evening for this item. Well, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, it's always great to see so many people at a board meeting, especially so many young people at a board meeting. Um, Read for a Better Life is a program that we've been doing in Conroe ISD for many years. And as a new superintendent, I was asked a lot of questions coming in. Are we going to continue item A or item B or item C? And when it came to Read for a Better Life, that answer was very quickly, yes, we will continue that. And so for those of you that don't know what Read for a Better Life is, it's a district-wide initiative where we dedicate time to reading aloud to children. It's something that we hope that we do every single day in our classrooms, and we hope that it goes on every single night in every home in our school district. But tomorrow is our very special day where we, we really focus around the entire school district are reading aloud. So many of us that work in this building will go out and read to students. We'll have volunteers from all across the community come in and read to students. You'll even see high school kids moving down to the elementary, intermediate schools and reading to students. And it is really a great day. And for, for uh, many people in our school district, it's like Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> I'm speaking to those librarians. I know we have some librarians here. Would y'all stand up? That's a day to celebrate librarians, too. Let's celebrate <laughs> librarians. Thank you for making reading special in your buildings. We, we do appreciate it. As part of our Celebrate Our Schools this year, when we brought all of our teachers in, um, we had a very special presentation of a book. It was a tradition that Dr. Stockton started with to read a book to all of the employees of Conroe ISD during uh, our Celebrate Our Schools, which is like convocation. So almost 6,000 employees come to that event. And instead of me reading a book this year, we went to some children and asked them to read a book. And we filmed them on video. 
Many of them are here today, and I want to tell you that I'm like starstruck as I'm looking around. I've probably watched that video a hundred times. So, like, I see some faces in here, and I know exactly the words that you said in this video because I remember <laughs> you so well. You were so great. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to show that video tonight. This video has been, we, we put it on our social media, so Facebook and Twitter, and this video has been seen almost 10,000 times. The, the author of the book, yes, great. The author of the book has seen our video. She loved it. She contacted uh, Ms. Blakelock, our communications director. She shared it on her Facebook page as well. Aww. So it's really made a big difference. So this is really bad planning on my part because I'm going to try to read a book after this, which is bad. Like I should never try to follow because this is way better than anything I will ever do. I promise you this. So let's enjoy the children reading Be Happy. Be Happy by Monica Sheehan Sing and dance a little Draw and paint a little Make friends Share what you have Don't compare yourself with others Be the best you Be helpful Be curious Be brave Stand up for yourself and others. Be a hero for Mother Earth. Say thank you to the people that teach you, help you, cheer you on, and get you an ice cream cone. Unplug yourself from the TV and video games. Go outside, play, explore. Read books. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The only real mistake is not trying. Believe in yourself. Do what you love. Follow your heart. Be kind. Be thankful for all the people and things that you love. Dream big. And don't ever lose hope. You'll never know what tomorrow will bring. So have fun. Make the world a better place. And be happy about being you. Can you think of some things you're happy about right now? My sisters. Basketball. I'm nice to kids. Go to the pool. My brother. Family. Singing. My mom. Faithful. Super Mario Odyssey. School. Believing you. Now do you see why I've watched it a hundred times? Okay, for our movie stars, if you were in the video, would you please stand up, kids? Can you come up here? Can you come join me? Come up, come up. Yeah, that's the same size. really do want to start getting autographs. <laughs> so we're, we're going to have them introduce themselves, and I'm going to make one addition to our group here. If you were at Celebrate Our Schools, you also noticed that we had um, a very special young lady that served as our Master of Ceremonies, and that was Miss Lily. Lily, will you join us up here as well? So I'm going to come by, and if you would just tell everybody your name. Okay, and how about what school you go to? Can you do that? 
I know that Gisela can start us off great. Okay. I'm Gisela Sarmiento, and I go to Conroe High. My name is Adrian, and I go to Anderson Elementary. My name is Jaid, and I go to Anderson Elementary. My name is Adrian, I go to Pearson Elementary. I am Zephaniah, and I go to one in elementary. My name is Shatari, and I go to Ryan Elementary. My name is Ella Bedtime, and I go to Sam Houston. <laughs> My name is Genesis Davis, and I go to B.B. Rice. My name is Donna, and I go to Anderson Elementary. My name is Daniel and I go to Runyon. My name is Liliana Wildy and I go to Grangeland Intermediate. Let's, uh, let's all squeeze in. Y'all squeeze in here. Come here. Come back here. Come back here. Squeeze in closer where we can take a picture. Two rows. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Like we're friends. Okay, now, the next thing is if your big brother or big sister or little sister or little brother are up here with me, will you come join me? So, any more kiddos that are here, will you come join us? We have cookies, so you're going to want to come. All right. So if y'all want to turn around and sit, you're going to turn around and sit. Hey guys, you're going to turn around and sit. I'm going to sit in this chair and read you a book. So turn around and sit. Turn around and sit. There we go. Turn around and sit. Sit down. Here we go. Turn around right here. Turn around. You can scoot closer. Do we have any more kids or adults that just want to come to the carpet this evening? <laughs> Come on, Fernar. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew for sure that I couldn't read Be Happy as great as you all read Be Happy. So I looked for another book for tonight, <laughs> and I was able to find another book by the same author. And, and it was a book that we also considered for Celebrate Our Schools, but I thought it would be perfect to read tonight. So this book is called Love is You and Me, and it's also by Monica Sheehan, all right? So I'm going to show you the pictures. I'm going to do the best I can, but we also will have pictures up on the screen behind me, okay? Love is You and Me. Love is me and love is you, so when you smile, I smile too. You recognize some of these characters? Yeah, they look a little familiar. When you're around, the skies are blue. It's like being happy times two. Love is sweet. <laughs> and love is grand. <laughs> Sometimes love is just holding hands. It's a feeling inside. It's a smile in your heart. It keeps us together when we are apart. Love is fun, and it's feeling free. Love lets you be who you want to be. Love will catch you when you fall. Love, it's the greatest gift of all. <laughs> it 
It's just us two without a care. A little vacation for buddies. It's what we give. And the times we share. It wipes away the tears and sends our troubles along. Love is the place where you always belong. And we've got love, me and you. We're sticking together. We'll see it through. And wherever we go, love will always be because love is you and me. What y'all think about that? You like that one? Yeah. It's pretty neat that you had your little brothers and sisters join you too. I'm for real just starstruck sitting here. I'm, not gonna, I'm just telling you the truth. Like, you guys were awesome in the video. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that with everybody. And thank you for being here tonight. And thank you. Uh, if, we, if you're a parent of one of our kiddos that's down here, would you stand up so that we can celebrate you? Hey, parents. It might, it might have been made. It's a great Valentine's Day book, I think. Okay. So the last part of our program tonight might be the most delicious part. <laughs> but we have a cookie for everybody. So thank you all for coming. Ah. What? What do you think? Huh? It's like Conroe, right? That's pretty cool. So, so you have to ask your parents before you eat it. You may not have had dinner yet, so you'll need to talk to your parents. Good call, yeah. Dr. Did you get one yet, buddy? You want to get some over there? We'll run out. Here, baby. Here you go, sweetie. You need one, buddy? Right here? How about one more hand for our kiddos? Great job. All right, we can get up. Parents, you are always welcome to stay, but you're also welcome to go home if students have homework or it's, you need to get home and, or get to dinner. So now would be an, a nice time to exit if you need to. Like I said, you're welcome to stay if you'd like, but it's also an appropriate time for you to leave. Thank you for bringing your kids tonight. Uh, made for a very special evening, so thank can you so much. Yes. She might need more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, thank you. Yeah, movie Really good. <laughs> Stop on my house. <laughs> Stop <being sad. laughs> Tell Jim the cookies are for the guests. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, thank you very much for allowing us to do that. That was no. a special one. That was special. Very special. Thank you very much. Um, item 2B is citizen participation. Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes, they have. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Godfrey, will you please call the first person who has signed up? George Young. Good evening, board members. My name is George Young. Good evening. Good evening. I came here this evening to read you a book of complaints, but all of the problems were resolved part by Dr. Hyde and part of them by the chief of police. So now I'm going to give you back all your time. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Mr. Young. We'll take that anyway. We'll take that. Thank you very much. <laughs> come back next time. Next time. Come back, come no. back any time. <laughs> Second person, Miss Godfrey. Andrea Custer.
With a foundation, foundation such as this, imagine for a moment the future of this school and the intrinsic partnership between first responders and the children and the veteran community. I can see fire trucks with the dedication, EMTs reading for a better life, and police officers teaching students about safety while demonstrating the essential co cohesion between first responders and the general public. During Hurricane Harvey, we saw people ignore ideological, political, and geographic boundaries to help total strangers in need because heroism knows no boundaries and neither does gratitude. This would be everyone's school. A school in Officer Ramon's name is a dedication to the thousands of people in the wake of Hurricane Harvey that beautifully displayed the resilience of the human spirit by relentlessly serving their neighbors in need from Conroe to Orange to Katy. It would show respect, admir admiration, and serve as a giant thank you to first responders everywhere. And this school would be a reminder to anyone who ever visits that, that anything you set your mind to is achievable when you rise to the occasion with fortitude and dedication, a message I think we can all agree is important for our youth. Courage and perseverance, Ramon Elementary. I think it's got a nice ring. I submitted to you, I submitted for your review an information packet about Officer Ramon, including a letter of support from his brother on behalf of the entire family, and sent to me by his widow, Cindy Ramon, and a letter of support from the Houston Police Department's fam Family Assistance Unit. Lastly, Officer Ramon's end of watch was June 15, 2018. And the greater Houston area is absent an amazing, heroic man. And I'd like to publicly say to Mrs. Ramon and all of Officer Ramon's family, friends, and colleagues, I'm so sorry for your loss. May he forever be remembered in all of our hearts as the humble, brave man you all knew. I'm so grateful for all the heroes of Hurricane Harvey, whom would be represented by Norbert Ramon. And CISD has an amazing, unique opportunity to thank them all. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, Ms. Tester. Rachel Honeyman. Well, that was beautiful. That was a good talk. I like the phone after. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to submit a name myself as well, and that name would be Paula Kapusky. I know a lot of y'all may know her. She is the Mitchell Intermediate Principal. She was the one who opened that school. She has a love for all things of education, but she's not someone who does this as a duty. She does this as a calling, and you can just tell those people when you walk into the room. She knows students that graduated when she opened up the school. She all the way up. She follows them through life. She follows them up into marriages and into the community and serves them in addition to being able to represent them as Mitchell as well as them being able to represent her and what she's been able to produce into this community. I'm a parent with someone at Bush and at Mitchell and at McCullough, and I can say that I literally sold my house and moved out to get away from how big this district is. It scared me, it scared a lot of people that have to come up through inside this organization because I had two normal average boys. So I sold my house, sold it, listed it in a day, and I went and set underneath a fifth grade orientation outside of this district, inside a different ISD. And I was like, I can do this. I can bring my kids here and I can do this. But just to do my due diligence, I decided I need to also go sit underneath where I'm going into Mitchell. And I'm going to sit under Paula Kapusky and hear what she has to say about CIRC. And being that she's done this 26 year, having the longest tenure inside Conroe ISD and accolades of high performing school, I left that meeting saying, I could have done this, but I have to stay here. I literally pulled out, lost thousands of dollars on that house, walked a neighborhood, knocking on the door saying, I have to live there. Because this place not only, with Paula's lead, invests in the kids academically, but socially, emotionally, she prepares them. And I knew that if I stayed with her, that not only would my kids may get into the school they want, we're going to graduate from the school that they want. And it was very clear knowing that she could get us there. So I would humbly submit Paula Kaplusky, even though it was a fine example for police officer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your comments. Um, item three is the consent agenda. I have had no request to remove anything. Seeing none, do I have a motion? So I move. No, go ahead. I, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. A second. All right. All those in favor? 
Motion passes. Item 4A, receive update regarding targeted improvement plan and turnaround plan for Sam Houston Elementary. Dr. Knoll. All right, we'll invite Dr. Debbie Phillips and Dr. Tamika Taylor up to present this item. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Knoll, thank you so much for having us here this evening. The plan we're presenting tonight is essentially the same plan that you approved last January. After receiving our data this summer, we've added a few more specifics, um, tweaked a few things, but we want to take this opportunity to bring you an update um, and bring you up to speed on our progress. And this will be the plan that we hold tight to for the next two years. Before we jump into it, we want to introduce our incredible staff at Houston Elementary. Viviana Harris, our principal, is here tonight. Viviana. She is the glue that makes it all happen. She's an amazing leader. We're very proud of her. Um, we also have a, a recently a new addition to our leadership team, Vanessa Lincoln. Is Vanessa here tonight? Yay, Vanessa. She is uh, serving as interim assistant principal and doing an amazing job. And we still have Teresa Waller, wonderful assistant principal. Um, our counselor, a Amber Bradford, is she here this evening? Yeah. Yay, Amber. Thank you for all you do. And of course, um, Dr. Delise Lloyd has been with us for the last three years, our school improvement professional, Dr. Lloyd. Thank you. And we also want to recognize all of the teachers that make the magic happen. Sam Houston Elementary teachers, please stand in the staff. Yay. Thank you so much. I know you guys are exhausted. We appreciate you coming out tonight. Um, this year we also have uh, refined some district support for Sam Houston. And so we're excited that uh, Dr. Edith Upshaw is taking the lead in supporting, um, providing support for Houston in the areas of planning, professional development, and coaching. And Dr. Upshaw is also instrumental in um, rallying her troops together to uh, content coordinators and district coaches to support Sam Houston as well. Uh, Dr. Shelley Winkler is continuing to serve as the district coordinator of school improvement. She ensures compliance, keeps us on track. Um, she's also going to be supporting Viviana Harris and Houston in the implement implementation of instructional rounds that we talked about in January. Tamika Taylor, Dr. Tamika Taylor is supporting everything related to data-driven instruction, including testing, uh, data meetings, interventions, but most importantly this year she is um, designated as the district communication contact between us and the school. Um, we want to be sure that we streamline all of our communication with Sam Houston and the teachers and make sure that we don't inadvertently give mixed signals with all of the support that we want to give. So we're really excited about the support team that we've built. Um, so first, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Taylor, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about the new accountability system and the progress that Sam Houston is making. Hey, Board. As you will recall, you underwent a training on the new accountability system that was performed by Region 6. And just to give you a summary so that we can all understand this system a little better, this is a system that has three domains that the state will be looking at. We will be looking at student achievement, school progress, which has two domains, academic growth and relative performance, and then domain three, closing the gaps. And so I will talk a little bit more about those as we look at our data. For campuses to reach what is called MET standard with the state of Texas, you have to either meet domains one or two under the new accountability system, and as a part of domain two, they will look at the best of domain of part A and part B, and then you have to meet domain three. So we have to meet one or two and three under this new accountability system. And so looking at, at Houston scores, our scores from last year, looking at domain one for student achievement, this is just the passing rate on STAR. How did all kids on campus do on the STAR test? The target set for the state was 60. Houston scored a 56 in that area. Domain two, progress, 2A, the target for the state was 60. We scored a 59 there. For relative performance, part 2B, the target was a 60. We scored a 59 in that domain. And for closing the gap, the target was a 60. We scored a 43. 
So when we look at those scores and we look at 2017 to 2018, the best way to compare that is just to look at the kids at the approaches grade level because the system changed a little bit. The test did not change, but the accountability system brought us some different numbers and measurements that we had to contend with for this past school year. So when we look at the way we performed in 2017, our overall achievement was 51% at passing at the approaches grade level. We went up to 59% at overall achievement in 2018. Reading in 2017 was 53% passing. We went up to 56% in 2018. Math was 55% passing in 2017. We went up to 69% in 2018. And then writing, 41% in 2017, we went up to 43%. So as you can see, we're on an upward hill. We are making progress in those areas. And to really solidify that, and to like Dr. Phillips said, narrow our focus, we are going to continue our plan that is in place by the district, in addition to maintaining a partnership with Region 6. And through Region 6, we're going to be provided with services this year, different from last year. We will participate fully in that process through the TASE process, which is a continuous school improvement process that Region 6 sponsors by the state of Texas. With that, you've already met Dr. Delise Lloyd. She will be a part of that process, continuing to serve us with Houston Elementary, in addition to Region 6 uh, staff members. Also, as a part of that, we have identified our campus leadership team with the principal and administrators in place and our district support team, in addition to participating in uh, Region 6 professional development, where we will really solidify that data management piece, making sure we're looking at student data and continuing to receive professional development and growing this campus. So we're so excited to do that. And Dr. Phillip will talk to you a little bit about the plan that is before you as related to all of the plans we've talked about tonight. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. You're welcome. Okay, so we have, um, I, I believe Dr. Knoll already emailed you the entire plan, so I won't get into all the specifics. And, <clears throat> and actually that plan that he e emailed you is just a part of the whole picture of what we're doing. But we'll just, just as a, a, a big bird's eye view, we have three goals this year that we're working with with um, Sam Houston. Uh, first off, um, to we want to increase the overall 2019 writing assessment to 60%. That's our goal this year. And we're going to do that by um, utilizing instructional rounds to develop stronger planning models, coaching cycles, and delivery of instruction during wor writer's workshop. And last January, we talked to you about the benefits of instructional rounds and how we're going to weave that in this year. We want to stress that it's more than just observing other teachers teaching. Um, it's a time for teachers to really reflect on what they're doing well and then areas that they still need help with. And the most impactful part of instructional rounds is that through this process, it triggers coaching cycles. And so teachers recognize, here's an area that I could get better at. And so they have that personalized one-on-one -on -one support from a coach. Um, the second goal is to increase the percentage of students making or exceeding progress on the STAR reading assessment. That would be that 2A, 2B part. Um, we're going to do that through developing protocols for instructional planning, disaggregating data to target initial instruction, reteaching, and providing interventions to address the various needs of students. So the last two years, Sam Houston has focused on the structure of guided reading. You've heard us talking about that. And, and then last year, we added the idea of generating effective questioning during guided reading. Um, they've also been working on building those strong professional learning communities, coming together as a team, supporting each other. Um, this year, they're ready to take on more. So this year, we're going to add another layer to that. Um, they're going to take on more of the data disaggregation, um, as well as more of the reteaching and more of the interventions and enrichments. So goal three. Um, to increase the level of passing rates on the STAR reading assessment from 56 um, to 70. And they're going, again, to use the instructional rounds method to help make that happen. So I think it's important to keep in mind that this plan is building. We're heading in the right direction. So this, ba this plan builds upon what's been going on in year one and year two. Uh, we started with basic structures, such as how to do guided reading, and now we're adding those extra layers of support. Um, especially for the benefits and enrichment. 
So aside from that, we've also added other support nets as well. Um, we've added a family engagement liaison that we're really excited about, a new position for Sam Houston. So we have somebody dedicated exclusively to supporting the community and supporting the families. She's got a lot of great um, uh, ideas already. We're looking at having uh, ESL classes for parents. We're looking at offering technology classes for parents to learn how to navigate the web. So we're excited about that. We've added a second literacy coach to Sam Houston. So we have one coach that's pretty much working with kindergarten through second grade teachers. And we have another one that's able to just support third and fourth grade okay. teachers. Um, last year, we added a positive behavior support liaison. Um, we had some shifting in funding, and we were able to pick that back up again as a district and to keep that support going. Um, and we've also uh, posted uh, two t uh, positions for two teachers. And when we find the right teachers, they're going to be able to provide additional small group support for, for students. Um, and then again, uh, we've added district support for planning. So we have our curriculum coordinators who actually write the curriculum meeting with, with Sam Houston teachers to help them plan out the most powerful lessons. So we're excited about the, the, the plans that we have ahead. So again, um, we don't, we, uh, with the added support and, and the, the um, talent of the staff that we have, we feel like we're really on the right path. We're not asking for any approval. You've already approved the plan, but we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Mm -hmm. Community li liaison. As I recall, a couple of years back, we we added an additional liaison, and substitute a counselor or, or some metric there. Um, did we lose that liaison? I don't know that we. I don't recall that we had an additional <clears throat> counselor. But maybe you're thinking of the positive behavior support person that we added a couple of years ago. <clears throat> Pardon me. The what? Oh, okay. Maybe uh, Shelly's thinking you may have been thinking of Austin Elementary. We uh, did add a, a second. Thinking Sam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we we didn't, we didn't add an additional counselor at Sam. I know the ratios didn't justify it or numbers versus the model that we have for it. The the positive behavior support person came in and took a lot of that role. Yeah, it took some of that off what the counselor was doing mm -hmm. and free the counselor up um, to do more. Do we see it have that role in play? Yes, yes. we do. So we're adding now on a community liaison. As yes, well. it's a second. It's a new family position family. this year. Yes, good. Mm -hmm. very good. Good question. Mm -hmm. You sort of halfway answered part of my question here with the two literacy coaches mm -hmm. splitting the grades. And so my question was, how does this plan play out in the vertical alignment with the younger non-testing grades? And particularly with the math coach, um, that looked like that was the lowest score on the passing rates there. Mm -hmm. Um, are the younger grades getting this additional assistance, or is it only being implemented once they hit the testing grade? No. The, well, we have a literacy coach just designated right. for K through 2, so they're getting a lot of support through literacy. And then what's so wonderful about our addition of Vanessa Lincoln, the, the new assistant principal, is she was a district, one of our best district math coaches. So we have a full-time math coach that's helping all of the grades, not just 3 and 4, and then we have Vanessa Lincoln support as well. And then you had also mentioned the, the PLCs, and I'm sure it's in here, I apologize if it is. Is there any cross-campus PLC work? I know we have some campuses that are having joint PLC meetings with grade levels and stuff. Is there any of that going on with I campus and bringing we, in do we uh, have any of that plan? teams from other campuses working with them as well? With, well, through the instructional rounds, we'll be doing that. Um, but as far as like planning together, I'll yeah. defer well, that, that to Tamika. That will be a part of the instructional round process, that whole cross-managing of what's working well on campuses with similar demographics and looking at those master teachers at Houston and throughout our district. So that cross-alignment will actually be brought in through the instructional rounds piece. Okay. Yeah, because with, with the rounds, they, they may not always be observing <coughs> teachers at Houston. You know, we have plans for them to go and observe at other on other campuses as well. Dr. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Dr. Phillips, I had a question. You you mentioned there's two additional staff that you're going to be. Two teachers that we've posted, yes. Okay. When do we anticipate those to be filled? They are posted, and have we started interviewing? No. Viviana? Not no. Yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they've been posted for about a week. I mean, I, I know we've got all hands on deck, but I just think if there's positions that are unfilled, that's the campus we ought to be concentrating on. Oh, unfilled. absolutely. Yeah. And, and Dr. Sharples is working on heading yeah. that up for us. Okay. So 
I mean, can, can we get an update maybe at the next board meeting to make sure that those have been filled or, or what the status is just to make sure? I know we all want to stay on top of this and we want Sam Houston to succeed as well. Yes. But, and I just think board making sure that we're on top of that, Absolutely. holding everybody accountable will be helpful. Excellent segue to my question. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are putting a lot of resources towards Sam Houston and rightfully so. I think the board is very supportive of the plan you guys have in place. My question is more of a long-term perspective. Uh, so once we get the grades and some of the scores and so forth where we want them to be, I, I like to get a better understanding of what's the plan thereafter. Mm -hmm. See, because what, it seems like we're attacking this strongly, which we should. We we got a we got an issue at hand, and we're trying to address it on all hands on deck approach. But what happens once that issue is addressed? Do we start to lose ground thereafter? So. It's more for me, and it doesn't have to be answered in this in this at this meeting. But I like to know long term what do we plan to do to maintain and, and continue to to thrive at Sam Houston, as opposed to getting us where we want to do, where we need to be, checking a box and moving on. No, absolutely, and we've learned a lot through Austin Elementary um, in that process. The, the support that we poured into Austin Elementary is basically. <laughs> continuing but as the teachers become more and more um, self-assured and and become taking over the leadership roles on the campus we've slowly started withdrawing but but it, it's not until they start demonstrating that they're ready for that next move and to start taking taking the helm when it comes to the planning and and whatnot so the the extra counselor that we placed at Austin is still there the positions we have not withdrawn any of that support and and so we know not to do that until we feel fair, like fair enough I just want to make sure we were looking at this as a more long term. Yes, and absolutely. I had a question to dovetail off of Mr. Williams. Um, I was really touched, I think, when we talked about it, that I believe some of the teachers were taking on the students as individually as mm -hmm. mentors. Yeah. And uh, really applaud uh, everybody there at the school for, for just taking that on and doing that in their own time. And, and that really shows the dedication and care that we're all about. Yeah. Um, so my question is really more of a thoughtful question of, uh, which I guess we have this community liaison addressing, mm -hmm. is from a community standpoint, uh, kind of what Mr. Williams was saying, after we get education part there, how as a community can we continue to support Sam Houston? Okay. And so possibly what I would request is in the upcoming meetings, maybe just a brief uh, reporting from either you via the community okay. liaison <clears throat> as to the efforts being made in that respect, where we can go out to our respective connections and those that are present and maybe reach out to the community to kind of come together and provide what assistance we can and whatever need that may be there. It's awesome. The community has been overwhelming. It's we have retired teachers that have stepped forward. We have churches that have stepped forward. It's been um, a beautiful thing. Everybody wants to to, to the help. Assistance League. I was at a meeting yes. the other day. <laughs> big, big time downtown on, on that. Uh -huh. Yes. I, I'd also like to say, in, in not in the form of a question, but really in the form of a statement that, and I also share your concern that that you know that this uh, improvement not just be a one time, but a but a continuous yes. thing, but. I, I do know from experience, and I've seen people like Viviana win before, and they don't win one year. Okay. <laughs> That's it right. It usually takes more than one year. Uh, uh, to, to get Rena there. took her more than one year. Uh, yeah. You know, took Viviana more than one year at, at, at Anderson and so on and so forth. But I'm just telling you, people like her with her commitment uh, is it, not a one time thing. Okay. Right. So I'd like to point out that, again, she left a very successful campus and is doing it all over again. And so I want to thank her publicly again. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just finish. I have all the faith in the world. <laughs> and, and I'd like to quickly dovetail on that. I had the opportunity to be at Sam Houston the first week of school. And I saw the looks on the kids' faces when they were coming in the doors. And they were excited to be there and excited to be learning and the staff and the atmosphere on that campus was absolutely amazing. So, um, and I know that's that's leadership from Dr. Knoll down to everybody at that camp. So thank y'all. So this is more of a, a state driven question I have for you, but I mean, 
we saw the assessment and the standards kind of shift on us this year. I have to wonder, how does that play in? Had we had the same system, would this have been a different result for Sam Houston? Absolutely. I'm going to let Tamika, because I, I, we, we tried to do that. It's very difficult. And, and I understand to compare, that, but I just, but when, when, when we have shifting standards yeah. and we have shifting accountability systems, and, and we saw a major shift this year in that, how does that? directly impact them yeah. so we we've played with those numbers we've gone back and forth and the the mathematical alignment is just not something that you can compare apples to apples but when you look at the progress that was made compared from last year under the index system to this past year mm -hmm. under the domain system we certainly made way more progress and had we been under that old system that would have been measured differently okay and so just mathematically we would have been extremely close. We can't say for sure what those numbers would have been, but we can confirm that we have made the needed progress numbers okay. wise and we continue to do that. So we're proud of that. That that was what I thought was the case. And and so when it's a moving target, I mean it's it's really hard on our campuses to to have a plan in place that you're working towards and then everything shifts on you. And so I really want to make sure that those of you in attendance and, and that we have that on the record that y'all y'all have made substantial progress and and while this doesn't necessarily show all the progress that you've made and i'm so proud of of our campus staff and of our students because they're putting in the work towards this and they're changing lives this this is a campus with legacy and and we're talking about the family engagement and that's that's a huge piece of this because you're able to change not just one student's lives but the lives of many many other students and that aspect of our education system sometimes goes overlooked at the impact that you all have not just on that one student but on their parents and on their grandparents and on their siblings that are already past your campus and so I really want to thank you for all the hard work you've continued to put in and all the hard work you will put in. Um, but it's because of your love for the kids and it's your love for making them as successful as possible, not because of just any standards come down from the state. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Phillips, Dr. Taylor. Uh, item 4B, consider adoption of Read for a Better Life resolution. Dr. Knoll. Dr. Hines. Good evening, Mrs. Bush, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Knoll. Uh, earlier, Dr. Knoll acknowledged that we had librarians in uh, the audience with us uh, celebrate the Read for a Better Life. Uh, so tonight, ask for your approval of a resolution. Reading is fundamental to the academic success of children. The Conroe Independent School District recognizes that the single most important activity to build the knowledge required for their eventual success in reading is reading aloud for children. Reading aloud builds sound and word awareness and stimulates language development. It helps children to practice listening and provides students with a greater range of experiences. In addition, the nurturing attention from parents during the reading encourages children to feel a positive association with reading. Reading to children builds motivation, curiosity, and memory. Reading is not only a vital skill and a fundamental function of today's society, but reading is a gateway to new ideas, to learning, and provides fuel for the imagination. Therefore, the Board of Trustees are respectfully requesting to consider the adoption of the attached resolution, which proclaims that the staff of CISD will support Read for a Better Life and authorizes the district to enlist the support of the parents and community of CISD to read aloud to every student 30 minutes of every day. So we ask for your approval of uh, the Read for a Life, uh, Read for a Better Life resolution. I would move that we adopt the resolution as read. Second the motion. Um, thank you all for doing this. I know tomorrow is going to be a wonderful, wonderful day in this district as everybody gets out and goes on campus. All those in favor? Thank you, Dr. Hines. Thank you, sir. Item 5A, discuss possible names for Flex School 19 in the Oak Ridge High School feeder zone and the new junior high school in the Conroe feeder zone. 
Dr. Noll? Yeah, over the last few months, we've gone through the naming process for these uh, buildings, and I know that you've received via uh, not only the spreadsheet that we've given you, but also from emails from the community, as well as those that have spoken to us in board meetings, uh, many worthy names for these two uh, buildings that will be opening in the next two years. Uh, the next three items uh, on tonight's agenda will address these. This first item is just your opportunity to discuss and have any conversation. It's not an action item, uh, but it's your opportunity to uh, discuss or ask any questions that you may have uh, as you uh, prepare for the, the naming of these two buildings tonight. Anybody have any comments? Yes, I, uh, I, I want to say that uh, at our last naming process, I, I would like to say that we, uh, it, I, mean, I guess the way to say it is we had a, a couple of great candidates and we elected to choose one of them and defer the other. And nothing's changed in my mind about, uh, and I, I defer to the family, but uh, but Kicks Lamp, Mr. Lamp to me, it was always Mr. Lamp, so I don't know. But uh, Kicks Lamp was a wonderful educator and one that I think uh, is, has since passed away since we named the other school. And uh, I just think it would be uh, truly a blessing if we named the school after Mr. Lamp. No remarks to uh, against anybody else, right. just... Uh, I just feel like he led the way in 44 years, okay, uh, from the heart. So with that said, that, that, that was be well, all I have to say. I, That's the Flex 19? That's Flex 19. I apologize. No problem. I, I just want to comment, and I don't see Ms. Honeyman still here. I, I know um, Rachel personally, and I, I know what she went through with moving out of the district and where she looked and all that. Uh, personally, I would struggle, and I don't know about the rest of you, but to name, um, I actually have a child at Mitchell, and I think the world of Ms. Kopleski as well, but I would struggle to name any of our campuses after a current employee in that way. Um, so just, I appreciate the passion, and I appreciate what Paula does, but it's just a personal opinion. Yeah. I'd like to, yeah. I'd feel the same way um, but I, I'd like to throw a name out there as well if we're just talking about it because I, I agree with you on kick slam we we've had a few pages that have been uh, provided to us and like I said it's hard this is this, yeah. is, a, this is probably one of the hardest decisions we make because there's so many wonderful people to name schools out after um, and then we are we are burdened and obligated but also uh, blessed to, to pick one but the name that has been submitted as of late is uh, that something that's kind of wrong to me is that David and Cherie, uh, is it Shuma, Skuma? Suchma. 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 Thank you. Yeah, we've all heard it. Uh, just the stories we've been getting. I, I didn't know these individuals, but I've done a little bit of research, and they have uh, they've met, left a mark as uh, Mr. Lamp has as well. So I would like for us to at least consider that name as well. No. I actually wrote something down that regard. Go ahead. Um, no. Well, I was just... Uh, I'm going to say that I, you know it, it is exciting to name schools, and we have had a lot of uh, public response. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, I think uh, a name uh, of a gentleman that has served uh, this community long and hard, Mr. Hope, Reuben Hope. His name has been, um, uh, I think, mentioned quite a bit throughout the throughout the process as well. But I also appreciate all the, the recent emails and the recent public remarks, uh, which just shows the strength of the community leaders uh, uh, that we have here and all the wonderful uh, candidates that we have to choose from. Uh, Mr. Hope is, is deceased. Um, and uh, so I think, uh, I think everybody needs to uh, highly consider him as well. Would that be so, which one? Oh. For clarification, which one would you think? Nineteen. The the junior. Well, I, I, I was uh, <laughs> both. Whatever. We were kind of discussing okay. both. Um, um, okay. And while we're, I guess while we're yeah, talking we're, about yeah. that, you know, with the uh, with the junior high, I I, I know uh, there has been overwhelming support through the years to uh, name a school after our former superintendent, and. Uh, 
but okay. I know he has uh, been very humble, uh, in my opinion, and just the way he conducts himself in that respect. But I, I, I didn't know if we were kind of thinking about. Well, that. we put it out there. I mean, you put it out there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I also wanted to throw a name in, kind of echo what um, board member uh, Hubert said. So I actually kind of took some time to write some notes. I said the name of our school is one of our most difficult processes. Uh, this is due to the overwhelming number of well-deserving candidates that we receive. As I, read, as I read carefully through the submissions, I asked myself, what should our school namesakes embody? Um, I believe our name should bear the name of educators who've dedicated their careers to educating our, and serving our kids, educators who've spent their careers as public servants in the fields of education and community service, Thereby, the name David and Cherie Suchma have been submitted repeatedly by our educators and the countless number of children that they've served. Um, the Suchmas have continued to serve CISD, and I believe the naming of, these, naming of this school, specifically Flex 19 and Oak Ridge Feeder, um, after these selfless career CISD educators, I believe it's most fitting. So I'm going to throw my name, uh, my vote toward um, Mr. D David and Cherie Sushman, and, and as, as Mr. Um, Kidd said, it's no slight to anyone else. It's an uh, overwhelming number of very well-deserving candidates, but as I went through and, and read and thought hard, carefully about who should a school name namesake be you know, embodied there, and I, those educators, folks that have actually served our district, serve our, our community, and our lifelong educators, it just seems most appro appropriate for me. Uh, and I recognize that. I mean, I, I know we're just in discussion and we're not yeah, nominating. Because yeah. I was going to, I'm going to nominate Mr. Hope as well. Uh, but in, in just a long time service in the community, I agree with you. And and uh, uh, although he was not uh, an educator, served on the school board and served uh, as a representative of our community mm -hmm. in the legislature and did a lot for education. But I. I that's why this is all very good to have open discussion mm -hmm. uh, so that I think everybody knows how difficult this uh, naming can be. Yeah, I, I point out that it just kind of like uh, I suggested a while ago, you know, because they can't all be right. chosen tonight doesn't mean, you know, right. well, we grow by 1,500 students a year. Okay. It's <laughs> not the last chance. Okay? We'll get another one. This ain't the last rodeo. Get another, right? get another and, bite at the and, apple. And, uh, you know, like I said, every there hasn't been a name mentioned yet that's not deserving in one way, form, or fashion. I was going to say every and, single one. And, and we can think of ten one. others, too. You know, uh, and uh, so I, I would uh, I would say that uh, in all good, all, you know, in time, all things good things come. So, I, I, I would echo one of the earlier statements. I, I'm while they're all very worthy candidates, I'm just hesitant to to name a school after someone who's still currently employed with the district. Mm -hmm. So, correct me if I'm wrong. We do have one of these names. Are they still currently employed? But, um, so, I mean, I know we, we have Mr. Lamp and Mr. Hope are both deceased. Mm -hmm. but are the Suchmas still employees? They're not employees. They, they serve um, as mentors in our uh, summer Leadership Academy okay. for our eighth grade students. So okay. they're not full time employees. They are, I guess, employees in that regard. They come in and, and they are paid so they're to part time employees. Yeah, to do that okay. portion, but they're not. We employees. had the same discussion when we named um, Clark as well as. Um, and, and correct. We, yes. yes. I'm, I'm not yeah. discounting that. I'm yes. just to, to Mr. Moore's Stewart point. Well. I'm same in, capacity. Yeah. Same yeah. capacity. Yes. Stewart and Clark. Yeah. Um, so we've, we've got four names out there. We've got two schools. <laughs> I'd like to also add one more name. <laughs> okay. We've got five names. Go well, ahead. I, 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 was, I was at one, so I'm going I'm to echo Stockton as well for junior high. But go ahead, uh, Mr. Sander. Thank you. Uh, I also had down the Suchmas and Mr. Lamp. Uh, but I one teacher that uh, I am very familiar with, having served with her on this board, uh, was a teacher for a long time served as a board member for a long time, has been a community leader for a long time, and her name is Linda Sasser. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I think very highly of Mrs. Sasser and all the work that she has done and continues to do in our district and for the kids of Conroe ISD, and I'd like to submit her name as well. 
I could support that. Yeah. That's nice. So, uh, at the end of the day, we have five names, two schools. Uh, <laughs> but if I, if, if I could, I'm not going to Are gonna we going to add another name? Actually, no, no, I'm not, not going to have more than that. Well, yes, had we, had, about, we had a ton of names no, on our list, but wanna, we're discussing tonight. I don't want to throw another name out there, okay. but, but I do want to get something off my chest about uh, Dr. Don Stockton. He was very adamant to me when he left saying, I do not want a school named after me. <laughs> and not that I want to agree with, not that I want to follow that. I'm not sure that I'm ready to break his uh, advice as so early as you know, <laughs> nine months later or so, six months later. Uh, I am going to speak to that point because when his name came up, uh, that was my first question of, of Dr. Knoll. Um, about that because you know he was very adamant yes. about that and actually made me promise when I assumed being president that I would not allow that to happen while I was president. Uh, You're outgoing anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can't Thank you. you. Um, he anyway. Can't you. <laughs> but to that point, I asked Dr. Noll about that and he had a conversation with Dr. Stockton about it to where Dr. Stockton would be honored and humbled to receive that. Um, to that point, though, I told him I had to hear that for myself and <laughs> didn't trust hearing it from Dr. Knoll <laughs> <laughs> and, and contacted Dr. Stockton myself to confirm that because he was the one that made me promise that I needed to <clears throat> actually hear confirmation of that from him. And he did say that he would be humbled to receive it should that be what the board chooses but that it was our choice and he would never seek that or right you know ask that of us but that is up to us all right so we clear it's up to us <laughs> <laughs> we already we already knew that part though. Right. yes but like <laughs> anyway okay so. so i guess we should start with 19 and I, I, 19 is our first item on the agenda. So um, item 5B, name flex school 19. I would like to nominate Reuben Hope. For flex school 19. For flex school 19. Do I have a second? I don't think we require seconds. Do we not require seconds? No, under yeah. parliamentary procedure. Okay, wonderful. Can, anyone can make so nominations. So we have a nomination for Mr. Hope. I'd like to nominate um, Mr. David and Cherie Sussman. For Flex School 19, Oak Ridge High Feeder. Okay, we have a nomination for the Suchmas. And I'd like to nominate Mr. Kicks Lamp. All right. And it's HW, I believe, but I, like I yes. said, it's Mr. It's Lamp. I'll leave that <laughs> to the family. All right. <clears throat> we just take these one at a time and vote on them. Or is it open for discussion? Open on for discussion no? on the three. Okay. Is it open? Open for discussion. No more, no more nominations. No more nominations. No more nominations. No, okay. So. so. Well. So we got the. We got. Okay. Hope, Suchma, and, and Lamp. My only concern with Hope is, if this was a municipality, a, um, a building, if it was a courthouse or a, a law, a library, or something like that, I think it would be most fitting, but. Man, he spent a lot of time in the legislature and he made his career and is a civil litigator. And that's why I'm more prone to move toward the such because they are lifelong educators. They spent their career specifically in education, serving our kids and continue to serve our kids even after retirement. So that's why I'm a little bit more strong such must. And while I respect about the, the educators part very much so, uh, yeah, I've been in this county since 1970 so for the last 48 years, uh, and Mr. Hope not only served in the legislature, that was just a small portion, but he coached Little League teams. He was very instrumental out in East County in bringing Caney Creek High School. He was very instrumental uh, in a lot of uh, areas throughout the district. And you know, besides being an excellent lawyer, I th you know, uh, president of the Booster Club, uh, I could go on and on, uh, the, the fair, the rodeo, uh, the um, community parades, uh, just I could go on and on on the list of community involvement. So why I respect and, and recognize, you know, what you're saying after, you know, being here for 48 years and knowing the history of Conroe and the history of Montgomery County and CISD, uh, that's why I strongly uh, would encourage uh, consideration of, of Reuben Hope. 
if I could add to that myself, um, my, my thinking on this was the, uh, I like the idea of the Shusmos because they, for this particular school, because this is an Oak Ridge feeder zone school, and I believe they have spent a lot of time in the Tema area and in the in this area, yeah. and this area seems to be something more towards them, whereas the Conroe School, the, uh, you know, on C, the Conroe feeder zone, the junior high, that would be more where Reuben Hope is, is area. You know, he, his law firm was here in Conroe. I believe he represented the Conroe area. I know he was on the school board here for the entire school district, but to me it seems like that would be a, a more fitting place for, for Reuben Hope uh, conversation is that, that that's what I was thinking. Mm. I, I I would just like to remind y'all that when when it came time to name Flex 18 uh, Catherine Johnson Clark, that we had talked about Mr. Lamp and Mrs. Clark being you know and that is uh, if not deeper into the Oak Ridge feeder zone. We talked very clearly about one versus the other and and uh, 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 regardless of how that worked out. I just point out, uh, I absolutely agree with you, Mr. Kidd. There is no uh, locking Reuben into, or Mr. Hope into, uh, into a, a legal or government issue. He he did as much for this school district as anybody else. Uh, I just happen to believe it's Mr. Lamp's turn, and 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 after 44 years of education, his commitment is unquestionable. His commitment was unquestionable, let me put it that way. And so I just would remind everybody that if you want to vote for education uh, and for people who, who led with their heart, uh, Mr. Lamp is as good an example as any. And uh, I will tell you that on the next go round that, you know, Mr. Hope is in my book, okay? But I, I say that straight up because he, he is more than a lawyer, let me tell you. He helped many people, including me, and I wasn't a kid. <laughs> so, special man. Do we have any other comments? It, would the for the the Shushma is it? Would the name be David and Cherie mm -hmm. for both of them? Mm -hmm. It'd be called Such Metal Mary. Right, but on the name it'll say mm -hmm. both of them. Mm -hmm. just, if we that, choose that, that that's, 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 you choose that's up to us. It's up to you. <laughs> You, you really can choose. You could change it whatever. It could be such an elementary. It could be David and Sheree, you know, initials or whatever else you want Got to Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Any other comments? We're just ready to vote. We haven't had yeah. a Okay. Um, we have to have a. So we can make a motion. We need to have a motion on what name we're going to go with. Oh, we did that. Uh, no, we nominated. No, we nominated. You and make we had three I'm, different nominations. I make a move. I'm, that we <laughs> I'm going to motion. Move for, for Reuben Hope. Okay. Yeah. I have a motion for Mr. Hope. Do I have a second? I will second Mr. Hope for Flex 19. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? I motion David and but, Cherie Sushman. I'll, hold on <laughs> just a minute. All those opposed? All right. Motion fails. All right. Next motion. David and Cherie Suchma. Okay. I have a motion for the Suchmas. I second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? No discussion. Five. All those opposed? Motion passes. Suchma Elementary Flex 19. So David and Cherie Suchma. Congratulations. All right. Yeah. Item 5C, name the Conroe Feeder School Junior High. Do I have any nominations? I nominate Linda Sasser, and I'm not sure if she would want a middle initial or not. But well, it's nominations. We're not okay. seconding at this point. Okay, nomination. Nomination for Linda Sasser. I'd like to nominate Reuben Hope for the, for this uh, school. Okay, and Mr. Hope. Any other nominations? I'd nominate Don Stockton. All right, 
in Stockton. Discussion? No. I think we're discussed out and ready to go yeah. on. All right, do I have a motion for Flex or for Conroe Feeders Zone Junior High? I move we approve uh, Linda Sasser for Conroe Junior High School. I can second. We have a motion and a second for Sasser Junior High. Any discussion? All those in favor? Two. All those opposed? Okay. Five. Motion fails. Do I have another motion? For Don's. Don's. Oh. Don's. Yeah. <laughs> I have a motion for Dr. Stockton. Donald J. Donald J. Stockton Junior High School. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? I, you you, make your, do it, is your you? hand raised or not? I can't. I can't tell. Mr. No, Cooper. my hand is not raised. Okay. <laughs> he knows where I live. All those. <laughs> <laughs> all those opposed. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can abstain at least. You can abstain. No. You want to no, okay, abstain. Well, you want, well. All right. Motion passes. And Donald will say something. I am happy for him. But I wanna... <laughs> you can explain that one on your yeah, own. Yeah. Um, item 5D authorized formation of the facilities planning committee. Dr. Knoll. All right, Dr. Hines. Approximately 40 years ago, the Board of Trustees authorized the formation of a facilities planning committee to study the facility needs of the district. The committee's recommendation ultimately led to a four-year, $187 million bond referendum approved by the voters in 2015. Fast forward to 2018, we are in the final stages of the 2015 bond issue project. Uh, in light of the district's continued growth and the continued aging of the facilities, the district is seeking approval to establish a facility planning committee to study the facility and maintenance needs of the district and make recommendations for a future bond program. If approved, the seeking approval will include non CISD employee representatives from each of the district's feeder zones, along with representatives from community groups and the business community. Continue to schedule the meetings have been established with the goal of providing the report to the board in December of 2019. The superintendent, Dr. Noel, will lead the committee to support from the planning and construction department, the maintenance department, and the finance department. The district's architectural, engineering, and demographic service providers will serve as resources to this committee. We are requesting that you authorize the superintendent to form the facilities planning committee. Motion approved. I second the motion. Thank you, sir. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion passes. Item 5E, receive update on attendance zone for Flex 19. Dr. Knoll. Be Dr. Hines. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get his clicker. Elementary. Elementary or K-16? They don't have to work that out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's on. <laughs> you can show them how to do not that, right? Has, <laughs> not everybody has one of them here. Check one, too. Check, I, you I think it's coming on. Voice. Here we go. Thank you. Uh, we are going to, uh, just as information, to share with you tonight that we are about to begin the attendance boundary committee for uh, Suchma K through six campus and I know you're wondering why is it necessary for us to even uh, do boundaries or revise boundaries for schools uh, from time to time and really what we found over the last several years is when we add schools it becomes obvious that to, to meet our enrollment demands um, when we will uh, rezone also when we have a schools that become overcrowded or when we have a campus that's underutilized we've rezoned and then uh, over time, we often we see shifts in student density, and there could be things like uh, multifamily housing gets added into an area and changes our enrollment quickly. 
Um, we have areas that mature over time. We have areas that over time start to renew and we start to grow again. So we see all these patterns and uh, it really uh, results in us trying to come back and uh, look at attendance boundaries from time to time. And just a quick reminder, our uh, school district continues to grow. Um, we've added roughly uh, 15,000 students over the last 10 years and that trajectory is holding pretty uh, firm. We will receive a report uh, later uh, in a couple of months from our demographer to get updated information. So what, what is really uh, starting this process is uh, Suchman Elementary. We will be opening a new 1,000 student elementary school in August of 2019, and this campus is intended to serve grades kindergarten through sixth grade. And I know uh, Mr. Foster will show some pictures to update it here after I'm finished. Uh, this is, uh, you're wondering where it's located. The campus is east of I-45 and south of State Highway 242, and it's going to be located at uh, 10,261 Harper School Road. And uh, this is the campus location on a map. And just to get you oriented, there's uh, Irons Junior High School uh, at the top of the page, and then across 242 um, between uh, the, uh, on Harper School Road, which is now, it, this is an older picture, it shows trees there are no trees there now <laughs> here's a rendering of what the campus will look like and you know I know sometimes we get the question why is this process challenging and and from experience what I can tell you is schools are communities and uh, and families often have a history of attending a particular school uh, change is sometimes difficult Families often choose where they live to attend a particular school. So when we come in and say we're changing that, um, it's, it's emotional and it's uh, difficult. What are our objectives? Uh, and as we go into this process, our objectives first and foremost will be to develop an attendance boundary for the new campus. And, um, and we do want to not just fill it up and overfill it. We have to leave some room for growth at that school because it's, it's going to be located in an area that's still seeing some growth. Uh, at the same time, we also want to provide some crowding relief to Oak Ridge Elementary, Hauser Elementary, and Vogel Intermediate Schools. And of course, this will enable us to do that. Um, we've also targeted for us to look at we are creating a thousand seats in the kindergarten through sixth grade levels and we have uh, two schools that are um, overcrowded that we want to look at uh, Ride Elementary and Haley Elementary and we're hoping as a result of this added capacity that we could also find solutions for some of their crowding so those are our objectives going in to the process um, we have a committee it's it's not hundred percent finalized but we it's made up of principals uh, and parents from, from the attendance zone. So we have representatives from uh, the Oak Ridge uh, feeder as well as many of the campuses in the College Park feeder. In addition, we have district resources, Mr. Caker, Dr. Stewart, I don't know if Dr. Stewart's still here, she's still here, uh, and Regina Woody Crane, who uh, works with us in the, in the technology department, helps us with the maps and the, pulling the uh, demographic information. And our transportation director, Sam Devila, also serves as a resource to us as we, we also consider transportation when we look at boundaries. We have several goals. I won't read them all to you, but you know we, we do want to be mindful of what we're trying to do is provide quality education to our students. Um, we try to draw boundaries that are efficient and make, make the best use of our facilities. We also try to anticipate future growth or future locations of schools. Um, we, we did that, and I use an example of that. Um, when, we, when we opened uh, Snyder after Broadway, we knew there was another school coming, Bradley, and uh, we were trying to not move neighborhoods like twice in two years. So we tried to set the stage and uh, left some neighborhoods a little further away for that two years where they didn't have to move twice. Um, and so we, we try to communicate during this process. We will use our website as we did last time. It was very effective for taking comments. We can basically put up all the tools that we use and, and take feedback uh, through the website so people really don't have to physically uh, come in to actually participate in the process. Um, we will create some scenarios and we'll bring them back for the public. And um, we consider a lot of things. I mentioned several of them, but um, we look at future enrollments. We look at 
boundaries such as um, railroads, uh, major freeways, thoroughfares. Uh, we also consider transportation. And uh, so certainly every time we open a school and there are students that are close by, we try to make sure they go to that school uh, to reduce the, the traffic. Right now we're planning a series of three rounds of, of presentations. Um, and these presentations really rec represent the three phases. The first phase we come out and we share really publicly, this is what's going on. This is the process, this is how it works. And here's a chance to start soliciting some feedback. Um, our committee is meeting all during that time, um, beginning to look at scenarios. And we evaluate scenarios just based on criteria. You know, did it put too many students in the school? It's not a good solution. Did it, did it not get enough students in? We, we don't like that one. Um, and then the second round, as we work through it, uh, and this time, uh, you know, having gone through it several times, we're actually looking at trying to do something in the second round, a little bit more interactive, like a come and go thing where people can come in and participate a little bit in terms of giving feedback of the scenarios they like and the ones they don't like. Um, and then the third round, and we take all that back and we'll continue to refine our plans. And then the third round is really kind of uh, when we go back out to the communities that are impacted and we tell them what we're going to recommend to you. Um, and we do that so that everybody is on the same page. Uh, and then our hope is to come at the, uh, to the January board meeting with a recommendation for you. And Dr. Hines, can you go back to this one? That's the same presentation at each of those three, right? Each of those three, yes, sir. Okay, no, let me clarify that. It's the same time. We just do it. Noon. We try to put it on two different nights right. and usually one time during the day just to try to accommodate right. different right. So schedules. I, I appreciate that, yes. too. Yes. And so That's it uh, gives people some options. Sure. We're going to be uh, using Irons and Knox as our two locations uh, to make presentations, and both of the schools have been great about scheduling some time for us. We do, you know, just to wrap it up, we do understand the significance of the process. We don't take it lightly. Um, <clears throat> what we, we are committed to providing a quality educational experience. And, and as you know, you've been through this, probably the, you know, it's very difficult to explain to someone they're going to a new school. Um, but the best part is a year later, they forget. Because you get the school open and they're usually happy with it. And so uh, we're very committed to that. And uh, we want to we provide a product that people are proud to attend and, and want their children to go there. Um, so we, hope, we do hope to bring back to you in January if everything goes as planned. And obviously things could get off track. but. Um, and this year we have some challenges with where, where Thanksgiving fell and mm -hmm. uh, the winter break, but, but we worked around it. And so we'll, our hope is to be back in January with a recommendation for you from the committee. Well, I, I appreciate all the work that goes into this. You know, we have the difficult process of naming the schools and then the difficult process of deciding who goes who to goes which to school. Yes, and, and both of those are challenging processes. We're very grateful for everyone's participation in both those processes from a community standpoint, but also the teachers and the principals helping to lead this. So thank you, Dr. Hines. Madam you. President, um, may I have a moment of personal privilege? Yes. Uh, Dr. Hines, I just want to state publicly, having had the opportunity previously to serve on attendance boundary committees and facility planning committees, I fully understand how busy you're fixing to get as well as so <laughs> many of these other uh, support personnel. Um, I appreciate the professionalism of these presentations, but I also understand this does not ref truly reflect how many moving parts there are behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Everything from transportation to what does this do to special populations, to human resource allocation, to physical resource allocation. Um, so I just want to, ahead of the curve, say thank you to you mm -hmm. and to Dr. Knoll and to finance and planning and construction and maintenance and transportation and instruction and curriculum and technology and everybody that puts in so much work behind the scenes. I, I know what you're fixing to go through and blessings upon you. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Um, we received the update. We don't need to authorize this. Y'all are already moving ahead. So item 5F, receive capital improvements update, Dr. Knoll. All right, Mr. Foster. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Null. It's my pleasure to bring forward for you an update on our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district. I'm going to start with our safety and security pro uh, project. 
As we report over the summer, we've created a lot of the secure vestibules at our elementary, intermediate, junior highs, ninth grade campuses. Uh, so this is just a representative picture of Rice and their vestibule. The work <coughs> from now until the end of the calendar year is above the ceiling. Uh, so it's stuff you can't see. It's access controls, camera upgrades, it's commissioning those systems, putting them together. I'm happy to report that project is on schedule uh, and is, as I said, is scheduled to wrap up uh, in December over the winter break. Moving on to Flex 19, which is now <coughs> Sechma Elementary or Sechma K6 as we come, come through it. Uh, you can see from our uh, aerial photography now, the site is beginning to take its shape. You can see the major pathways on the site in the dirt still. Uh, notice that the concrete construction on the parking lots is underway and the, the density of the building structure itself is where our focus is currently. Uh, so you can see that building come together. If you were out there, you'd see some of the building systems going in underneath that uh, metal structure as it's going up as well. It is currently on schedule, scheduled to open in August of 2019. At Austin Elementary, our addition and renovation project, where addition is actually going to allow us to take some of the built portions of that building that have reached the end of their useful life out of service. So from this angle, you can see the building slab for the new building, and it's going to expand a little bit more. Uh, over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, we've been fighting rain and everything else. However, it is still on schedule. We're receiving the structural steel components for that building over the next two weeks. Uh, so it'll start going vertical and start looking like uh, Flex 19 does uh, as it progresses. The project's on schedule, so we're gonna finish the building moving into next summer, uh, move all the classroom furniture in, then so next summer we'll work through the process of decommissioning the parts of the building that are coming out of service. So we'll be ready for school in uh, August of next year. Right. At Irons Junior High, where we've got a 10 classroom addition, you can see that building is what we call dry currently. So the roof is essentially on it. The building exterior is uh, sealed up. You can see the windows and, and uh, their flashings are in the inside of the building and the masonry is uh, wrapping around the building now. So that project is also on schedule. It is uh, scheduled to open over the winter break, so when our students re return in January, they'll be able to attend classes in this building. So you can see the inside of the buildings where a lot of the focus is coming in. Uh, the building systems, you can see the finishes, things of that nature are going in. As you can see, we've got primer and sheetrock and things of that nature. The colors are going to start appearing over the next uh, couple of presentations. <clears throat> At our new junior high school, which is Donald J. Stockton Junior High, you have to say it real slow to get it right. Uh, you see here, uh, a lot like Flex 19 in Austin, we're in the in the building slab area of this building. It's a much larger project, so the slab is progressing uh, a little bit slower. But you see here, we've got the building utilities in, the grade beams are in, the slabs, pours are what's scheduled over the next several weeks, and the building steel here is also scheduled to deliver within the next month, and it'll start going vertical, so it'll be something to see uh, over the next several meetings. Now, we're currently working with FAA regulations because we're real close to the airport. So I'm hoping to get our drones in the air over the next couple of months uh, so that we can get some, some bird's eye views of this site as it develops. At Conroe High School, we're doing a building addition that's going to facilitate a major renovation of the main campus. Uh, the building addition is nearing uh, its finishing stages from this view, which is the common view that you get to see every month. You'll see it's starting to wrap up really nicely. Over the next uh, 45 days or so, we're going to be able to more or less reopen uh, Wilson Road, uh, as it says, because our construction traffic is mostly inside the building because most of the exterior work is done at that point, which makes our campus easier to navigate for the students and safer overall. Uh, on the inside of that building, it's really starting to, uh, to come alive. So it is scheduled to open over the winter break. So when the students return from uh, in January, they'll be attending classes in this, this portion of the building. So you can see the, the colors are starting to come in, the openness there, and that the new light we're bringing into that, uh, that building is uh, really starting to show. Uh, classrooms are coming together, so you can see paint, you can see carpet. Last month you saw a little bit of the cabinet work, uh, so that all is underway and proceeding on schedule. The building, I said, is turning over winter break. The project continues through December of 2019. <coughs> and that is our update. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Item 6A, receive financial reports. Dr. Knoll. Mr. Rice. Yes, good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. I'm here this evening to present the financial statements for the district uh, for the month of August. 
These statements will include our general fund, our debt service, child nutrition, our self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. Our balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances for the district. Each month, we like to look at our cash and investments. And we'll concentrate once again here on our general fund. Uh, as you can see, we have cash on hand of $13,300. We have bank deposits of $3.5 million. We have investments in our state pools of $59.3 million. We have an investment with Wood Forest National Bank of $30.2 million. We have our short-term investments, that's investments that are less than a year, $29.7 million. And our longer-term investments that are managed by TCG Investment Advisors at $51.8 million, giving us total cash and investments in the general fund of $174.5 million. The next statement we'll look at this evening is our income statement. Our income statement includes our revenues and expenditures for the district. Our revenues are broken down into three categories that include our local and intermediate sources, our state program revenues, and our federal program revenues. And we can look at the detail of our local and intermediate sources. And you can see that property taxes is the largest generator of revenues for both our general fund and our debt service fund. It's food sales and child nutrition and it's premium contributions in our self-funded insurance plan. Our projected fund balance as you can see, our projected increase in fund balance has increased uh, by about $1.7 million. That is the amount of the impact aid grant that we received, and that was able to offset expenditures that we had for Hurricane <coughs> Harvey. Uh, so that was a grant that we received that was actually <coughs> able to offset some expenditures in the general fund. Uh, projected fund balance in child nutrition, we're projecting a decrease in child nutrition. Once again, uh, they did a bunch of kitchen renovations this summer and used some of their fund balance for that. So we didn't have to go out into debt for it? Yes, sir. Correct. This is our 2015 bond referendum status update. Uh, we have currently expended and encumbered uh, roughly $470 million. Uh, we have an estimate, an estimate to complete of about $54.5 million. That's leaving us with a total completed uh, forecast of $524.3 million. And that'll leave us with about $4.1 million worth of contingency. Uh, Self-funded insurance, I'm happy to report that our plan ended uh, in the positive this year. Uh, our total revenues for the year were $47.8 million. On the expenditure side, we had total expenses for the year $46.4 million, leaving our revenues over expenses of about $1.4 million. And we also averaged over 500 employee visits to our employee uh, clinic, so that, that is good progress there. Our investments. Uh, our par value for our total portfolio was $393.6 million. Our investments in the pools were yielding 2.21%. Our investments with Wood Forest National Bank were yielding 2.22%. Our longer term in, uh, investments with TCG Investment Advisors, 1.66%. Leaving us with a combined portfolio that had a WAM of 57 days and yield 2.13%. Our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, was yielding 2.07%. Thank you. If there's any questions. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Thank you, Joe. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, what do we do? Oh. Personal privilege? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do we usually advise the such most in they, they already know. Well, I, 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 think, I think they uh, made a phone call to the. We, we, we have. I, no, I, I thought so, but I thought. I will. Um, I will make a personal phone call tonight to both uh, to both of them as well. But okay. Uh, That's what, I just wanted to. Yeah. Uh, to, to ask that question of you would be. Calling. Yes, I will. Take them a cookie. Yes. <laughs> there's, there's more right over here. Yes. No, no, I've got back. 3,000 texts. I was going to say, yeah. there were people in the audience that already took care of notifying <laughs> everyone for us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just, 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 just curious. Motion. Second. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you. We do have cookies for all of you that were troopers and you hung through the whole meeting. We have cookies. Please take one.